unfortunately became for me, and if you work at Facebook, this is pretty much going to happen to you. Um, it's your work life. Facebook <laughs> at Facebook is something you have to use. It's not something that's blocked from use like it is at some, for some employers. You're on Facebook 24-7 working there. So you, uh, there's a culture of friending everybody you meet in a professional uh, capacity. So I had a lot of people. It was, it was not my friends anymore. It was people who I worked with. So it became a professional platform for me. And after I stopped working there, I decided, you know, a lot of these people no longer are m- sort of meaningful connections to me. So I'm going to go mm-hmm. through my list, find out who I actually worked with in a capacity that was meaningful and people who I want to stay in touch with. And I whittled down a friends list that was, I basically have, you know, 1,400 friends. And I whittled it down to way too far. You know, I, I let go of people who I didn't want to actually let go of for other reasons that I won't get into. But okay. uh, I'm at 89 and I, and I am ready to add people back into my network. Okay. Huh, interesting. So, um so how does it I mean, I've never done a video on Facebook and I, I don't even I don't even think I know how to do it. But um so what what happens to that? Okay, so I got two questions for you. One, um if I put it on Facebook, does it remain somewhere on that app forever or does it disappear? Okay. Mm-hmm. And the next question is is that what's the great benefit of doing videos? I mean, I don't even I don't even know how to do it. But what what's talk about that because you are you you have so much knowledge of uh the world of video. I mean, you picked up so much as a child growing up with your father being a videographer and teaching uh video, you know, video. And now you do that, and so, you know, just talk about that, like in a general sense. Sure. Um, Well, let's answer your question first. The first part that I'll answer is uh, video on Facebook is persistent, most video on vid- on Facebook is persistent. There's a couple of different ways to use video now on Facebook. There's a video post, which is basically where you post a video to your timeline. And it's usually a pre-recorded video that you have maybe edited or maybe you shot on your phone and you just thought was cool. And you upload it to uh, a, a post. You, you post it instead of a photo, right? It gives you an option. It says, would you like to post an image or video and you select it from your hard drive and you post it? That video is persistent. It's not going to go anywhere. The only way you can delete it from Facebook is by, you know, going into that post and actually pressing delete. Or if you really don't want Facebook to have any of your information, you can go into your privacy settings and deactivate your account and somewhere a barrier, unfortunately. It's a little hard to find, but there is a way because of the uh, the GDPR, which is some European standards that are in place now for privacy, there is a way to delete your account permanently. And, uh, you know, it's good to know that that's there because a lot of people say, oh, well, it's on Facebook forever. Well, no, it's actually Facebook has a legal obligation to delete your account permanently. So do other companies. And that's a good thing for people to know. Um, So then the other aspect, okay, we talked about the first type of video. Second type of video is Facebook Live. That's where you go on your phone and you actually just use your camera on your phone to go live instantaneously. It's a pretty powerful tool, right? You know, you're in the car. uh, You have something important you want to say. You literally just tap a couple of buttons and go live on Facebook and it sends a notification to your network to tell them that you're live. And once it sends that notification, if you have engaging content, 
the people watching might share it with other people, and then you get that virality. The other third part is a new thing called Facebook Stories, and that's non-persistent video. You can share a video, but it's not going to stay on the uh, network. So it's kind of the, the Snapchat thing. Facebook and Instagram got wise to what Snapchat was doing, which is having these, in, these uh, ephemeral videos, videos that disappear in an hour or a day once mm-hmm. they're viewed. Uh, and that became something that Facebook and Instagram both have adopted since. So those are the three types of video. As far as so video talk, goes, go ahead. Talk, talk about, because that's, that's like interesting to me. They set it up with the intention that it was just going to be really very temporary. And so what's the benefit of that? How does that, how's that a benefit? Well, it's a benefit to the company because it promotes, people sharing lamer content, right? <laughs> There's a lower barrier to entry. It doesn't have to be precious. It, it okay. can be just whatever, right? You just okay. pick up your phone and film whatever, and it can be shaky, and it can be just like you in your, in your, uh, in your shorts hanging out and going for a walk in the woods, right? Like nothing special, but still – something that's important to your, you know, a little slice of life. And that kind of attitude is, I think, what people like. They're drawn to it. It's real. It feels very real. But it also lowers the barrier of entry. And then for the viewer, it makes them feel like, oh, my gosh, this is special. It's going to go away. I'm not going to be able to see it after today. So I'm going to try to look at my stories right away because, hey, if I don't, I'll miss it. So it's got both sides of that. It, it, it helps people generate it. It encourages generation, but it also encourages people watching. And that's the magic of it. Suzanne, I finally got, I finally got uh, our, our other guest that could meet Matt and uh, talk to him because he's a historian. But Jan Aldrich of Connecticut is on now. I finally got Yay. him. So uh, uh, can you allow Matt and Jan to talk about whatever Matt's, Matt's talking about with the UFO Association? Oh, because yeah. Matt, Matt, we don't only do Ace Folk Life, but it, uh, last night we did UFO Association uh, with this gentleman, Jan Aldrich. So, uh, uh, let me. Uh, I guess you both need to introduce yourselves, and we're recording, folks, so it's a live archive. Just going to be. This is culture. So Jan Aldrich, meet Matt. Introduce yourself to Jan, and then I'll let Jan introduce himself. But Matt, since you were talking, tell tell him what your name okay. is and what you do, please. Hi, hi, Jan. It's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Matt, and I am a filmmaker. And I guess today I'm a social media expert. <laughs> I do. I am, I am. I am that, I believe, after so many years doing it. So, Jan. Okay, well, I, I'm Jan. Good to meet you, Matt. Here is um, I'm a retired uh, military and then retired post office. So about 50 years of government service. Wow. Right on. And what uh, what branch of the military? Uh, Army. Cool. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> where, where, tell, tell me about that. Where? Uh, what year? Well, I started in '67. I got out in '94. So. Wow. Uh, oh wow. So that. Uh, did did you uh, do a lot of traveling? Yeah. Um, uh, seven overseas tours. So I spent almost. More than half my time overseas. That's so uh, uh, Italy, Germany, Korea. Time. Say it again. Germany, Korea. Oh, your phone is breaking up, Matt. Uh oh. Yeah. Huh. Is that why, any why is that? It's oh, yeah, that helps a little bit, yeah. Two. Okay, good. Good. So, what are we having? Some technical difficulties. I, you know, I, I, um, T. J. Um, is 
is taking and working on putting this together, and sometimes it just takes a little bit of time. But, Jan, last night you were a great conversation. You shared so much of your story, and I've never heard any of it. And so, you know, we, we got started, and we didn't we didn't get a chance to finish. So I want you to tell me the story where you think um, – your most important piece of work is, the most memorable piece of work is in your career. And I just want you to choose a highlight and have that conversation because it's fascinating. It's just fascinating what you did. Well, that's, uh, yeah, that was, that was uh, the the uh, minor cases. Like I say, it's mostly, it's it's not mostly mine. It's just, to me, it's the best case. Now, uh, you say I'm a historian. Actually, I'm a plotter. Okay. So we, here's a story about plotting through stuff. Um, there's a very famous letter in, U, uh, in, in UFOs, which is um, it's uh, uh, a letter signed by uh, General Twining uh, in 1947 in September which he says uh, UFOs appear to be real, not illusionary. And uh, I, uh, an earlier Project Blue Book, or a Project Blue Book uh, uh, head who wrote uh, the report on UFOs, uh, Captain Edward Ruppelt, revealed the, uh, that this letter existed. For the next 10 years, the Air Force denied that it existed. So from 56 to about 66, they denied it to, it, it was it existed. Um, and the letter was entitled uh, AMC Opinion on UFOs. AMC is the Air Materiel Command. It's one of the biggest commands in the Air Force. Uh, it's in charge of logistics and in charge of some research and all kinds of things. It's uh, it's a very big organization. It's it's commanded by a uh, lieutenant general. Uh, so everybody says, "Oh, this is a letter that uh, uh, just came out of the blue." That's the way people thought of it for 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 years. Things like that don't happen, though. Okay. And what... So, uh, being a plotter, I went to the Air Force Historical Research Organization and signed out a bunch of items, and it's essentially turning one page after another. So the UFO letter was written in 1947, but before, in 1946, here's a letter from, uh, this is the Army Air Force now, because the Air Force hadn't split out until 1947. The Army Air Force, here's the uh, letter from the uh, Assistant Secretary of the Army for Air, uh, Stuart Symington. He later became a senator, and he is writing to... A uh, rather famous Air Force General, uh, uh, General LeMay, who was uh, involved in the bombing in Japan. Uh, he, and afterwards, in 1946, he's a head of uh, research and development in the uh, Air Force, Army Air Force. And uh, uh, Secretary Symington asks LeMay, he says, if we look out there at AMC, the Air Material Command, can they, uh, what happens if they need an interim project before the next budget? Or can they do that? And uh, LeMay says, yes, they can do that. Uh, the commander of Air Material Command can start his own project on his own authority. But at the next budget cycle, he has to uh, he has to go ahead and ask for the project to be continued and placed in the budget. Okay, that's just 
1946 letter. The UFOs come on the scene um, 